Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to my finance channel. This is Pandrea Finance. In today's video, we are talking about the Greeks. Now, when learning options, you need to learn the basics. But what do most people do? They learn to buy calls when they think the stock is going up and they buy puts when they think the stock market is going to crash and the world is going to end. And that's their strategy. But so many aspiring investors and traders overlook the actual important basics, like in today's case, the Greeks. And then they wonder why they lose money. But not you, my friends, right? Because I know you are here to better yourselves rather than being on Wall Street bets all day long looking for the next 10x meme stock, right? Right? We are going to try to take everything that we're learning and make sense out of it through examples so that you can actually understand it, not just memorize it. And then when it's time to make a trade, you're like, I don't know what any of these means. So calls on AMC expiring when? Tomorrow. All right, so if you're ready, so am I. Hit the like button and let's begin. The Greeks is a term for multiple measuring factors which can determine and predict the price movement of option premiums, which allows you to understand the risk exposure of those options. Translation in simple English, these Greeks, and there are five of them that we're gonna go over in this video, are there to help us measure how an option premium price will be affected in the future based off of different things. And it really won't be that hard, so don't worry. The Greeks are broken up into five components, and here they are. Now you can see this in action by going to your brokerage and clicking on the option chain. So I'm gonna go ahead and click trade and trade options just to get to the option chain. Again, this is just an example, so it really doesn't matter which strike price, what expiration date. Click on any option and then the bid ask highlighted part, you're gonna click on that and a bunch of information will pop up and there at the bottom, you see the Greeks. And you'll see the five Greeks there listed. Delta, Theta, Rho, Gamma, and Vega. Now, some might argue that some Greeks might not be as important as others. And of course, depending on what style of investing and what trades you make. And while that might be true, depending on your personal scenario, I still think that we should learn the basic concept of each of these because, well, there's just five of them. Stop being lazy. Delta. Delta will be used to determine how much the option price of a particular contract will move either up or down depending on how the stock price, the underlying stock price moves. So the stock price goes up, well then how do we know what the option then will be? The answer, we use delta. Delta is defined as the expected change in an options price relative to $1 move in the underlying stock price. So again, delta is going to help us determine how the option price will move for every $1 the stock moves. Delta values you'll notice go from zero to one when we're talking about calls and zero to negative one when we are talking about puts. The delta number is the value that the premium price will increase or decrease by. So when buying calls, if the stock moves up by $1, then the option price will move up by the delta number. If the stock moves down by $1, then the option price will move down by the delta number. Now when buying puts, it's the opposite. So if the stock goes down by $1 and you buy puts, that's a good thing, then the option price will go up by that negative delta number that you see. And if the stock goes up when we have puts, then the option price will go down by the delta number. So we know this, but now we also know by how much an option price will either go up or down. Up or down. So here is an example. If we have an option with a delta of 0.25, then for every dollar that the underlying stock moves up, then the option price will increase by 25 cents. So let's say we have a stock that's trading at $50 and an option price of $2 with a delta of 0.25 on the call side. And now the stock rises to $51, a $1 move higher. The option will then increase by the delta number of 0.25, making the price of the option go from $2 to $2.25. Now this of course is very nice to know because you want to know, hey, if my stock goes up to this price, how much is the option gonna be worth? And now, well, you can know. Gamma. So now that we understand delta and how the price of the option is affected by delta, we can now understand gamma because gamma affects delta and delta affects the price of the option. So through this weird chain of events, gamma, affects the price of the option. Okay, good, all right. Gamma is the rate of change of an option's delta relative to one point moves of the underlying stock. So just like delta, when the stock moves up $1, the option price is affected. So let's take an example. We have a stock trading at $10 and an option contract price 
of $2. The option delta is 0.5 and the gamma for the option is 0.1. Now let's say the $10 stock increases to $11, which is a one point move for the stock. The gamma of the option, which is 0.1, will affect the delta of the option, which is 0.5. So 0.1 plus 0.5 is now, you got it, 0.6. The gamma gets added to the delta, and now the delta is higher, so that means that when the stock moves another dollar, the delta will affect the premium price even more. So you can see why delta is usually known in the option world as the speed of the option change, and gamma could be thought of as the acceleration. Now let's look at an example from our brokerage. We're taking a look at the SPY $460 calls expiring December 1st. This option is priced today at $6.46, and if we click on it, and click the bid ask spread area, we will see that the delta is 0.49 and the gamma is 0.02. So if there is a $1 increase in the stock, or in this case SPY, then the option price will move from $6.46 to $6.95 because we're adding the 49 cents from the delta. And when this happens, the delta then will increase from the initial 0.49 that we are seeing here to 0.51 because we're taking the gamma and we're adding it to the delta. Gamma of 0.02 plus the 0.49 is 0.51. So gamma increases the price of delta and delta therefore increases the price of the option. And of course the opposite holds true when the stock goes down. So there you go, that is gamma. One very important thing to understand about options is that all options lose value as they get closer and closer to the expiration date if all other things remain constant. So when you buy an option, you're always fighting time. And that option is always losing value every day, every week, every month, until at expiration, there is only the intrinsic value of that option left. This is due to theta or theta decay. Theta refers to the rate of decline in the value of an option due to the passage of time. Theta is usually expressed as a negative number, and that number tells you how much value the option will lose every day until expiration. So let's take a look at this example. Let's take a look at SPY calls expiring November 1st, which is a few days away. You'll notice that you are going to pay 78 cents for this $460 call contract. And if we click on the contract and go to the Greeks, you'll notice that theta for this contract is negative 0.40. Then this option contract will lose 40 cents of its value, which in this case, you're paying 78 cents is more than half of its value. This is the reason why we do not buy weekly contracts. The options have a huge theta decay and you'll lose a lot of value in your contracts just because of the passage of time since you're very close to expiration. Now let's go a bit further out on the expiration date of November 12th. This is a few weeks out and you can already see that the theta decay number is much less, negative 0.16. So each day the option will lose 0.16 off of the price of $3.22. So you can see how buying options with an expiration date further out in time will lose less value per day due to theta decay. So when the price does increase and the option price does increase, the increase will hopefully be higher than the theta decay decreases the value of the option, thus making profit. Now that you know all of this, you can see how selling options is favorable because you can sell an option and just let theta do its thing. And as the option price decreases, something that it naturally does, you as the option seller make money. Rho. Rho is like the ugly stepsister of the Greeks. At least that's what the word around town is, that it's the least important one of these Greeks. Now look, I'm not saying that ugly stepsisters are not important, but I kind of am saying that. Now, although it might be true that you won't use Rho in your option trading day to day, you never know when you might need it. Rho measures the price change of an option in relation to risk-free interest rates. Now, when speaking of risk-free interest rates, we are talking about something like US Treasury bills. You have an option price, the option price is affected by something. In this case, it's affected by the interest rate. Well, how does the interest rate increasing or decreasing affect the price of the option? Well, we take a look at Rho. For example, if an option has a row of one, then for every 1% increase of the interest rates, the value of the option will increase by the amount of row, which is one. So let's take a look at an example on Robinhood. We are taking a look at the Tesla $1,200 call option 
expiring November 26th. This option, as you can see, has a row of 0.25. Now let's say the interest rates, for whatever reason, increase by 1%. Say they go from 3% to 4%. Then these calls, which were $38.95, will increase by 0.25 so that the new option price now will be $39.20. So there you go, Meh. big whoop. Remember, call options generally rise in price as interest rates increase and put options decrease in price as the interest rates increase. So you'll see that call options have a positive row number while put options have a negative row. Alrighty, so got that one out of the way, that is row. Vega. Vega represents the amount that an option contract's price changes based on a 1% change in the implied volatility of the underlying stock. So just like all other Greeks, the option price is affected by something. And in Vega's case, that something is implied volatility. Now, I think you're starting to get the hang of it, right? I know it could be a little bit confusing, but you're doing great. I think, I mean, I don't know, can't see you, but you probably would have turned it off by now. So if you're still here, let's just, Keep going with the video. For every 1% move up or down in implied volatility, the option price will move up or down by the amount of Vega. Now, because Vega is based off of implied volatility, that therefore means that we should understand a little bit about implied volatility and how it is measured. Now, I plan on doing a deeper dive into the world of implied volatility because in my opinion, I think it's one of the most important things to know when it comes to option investing. So please subscribe if you haven't already so you do not miss a video. But to keep it short and sweet, implied volatility is the market's forecast of a likely movement of a stock's price. So an implied volatility of 20% would mean that the underlying stock is predicted by the markets to move 20% in that given year. IV can of course increase or decrease based off of a few things like supply and demand amongst other factors. So when implied volatility increases by 1%, then the option price of the contract will increase by the Vega amount. So let's say we have an option price of $10 and the option Vega of 0.25. An implied volatility increases by 1%, then the option price will increase from $10 to $10.25. Now in a real life example, let's take a look at AMC $50 calls expiring February 18th, 2022. We can see that the option is trading for $5.03 and it's a terrible bid ask spread. So again, this is just an example. Uh, the option Vega is 0 0.07. So if implied volatility in this case increases from 118 that you see here to 119, 1% up, then you will add the 0 0.07 from Vega to the option price. If IV increases 2%, then you'll just add double the Vega. So 0 0.07, you'll be 0 0.14. If it increases 3%, 0 0.21, you get it. You guys are smart. So that is Vega. Vega volatility makes sense, eh? Eh? So to recap, we are going to imagine we're buying some call options. Stock moves up by $1. The price of the option then increases by the delta. Stock moves up by $1, then the delta is increased by the amount of the gamma. A day goes by in the option's life and the price is then decreased by the theta because theta decay decreases that price of the option. Hold on, what's that? The interest rate just went up? Well, then the price of the option will increase because of rho because we know row is what we look for when interest rates increase or decrease. And as if all that wasn't enough, the implied volatility rises by 1%, then the option price will increase by the amount of everybody at once. Vega, you get, no, not Vegas, take it easy. There's always one in the crowd. All right, got it? Good. Now, why is all of this important, you may be asking? Can't I just buy calls and not look at anything else and just hope for the best? Sure. Go ahead and do it, but know that you are then just gambling. If you want to be serious with your investments, you want to understand different strategies and when to use them. For example, you can use Delta to invest in a stock without buying the stock, but by purchasing in the money calls with a Delta of one for the same risk exposure as long stock. Now I did a whole video on this and you can watch it by clicking right here. Also, let's say you want to sell calls, a strategy that I consistently use myself to make passive income off of my portfolio. Then you have to understand theta and theta decay of options so that you can sell the correct options and equally as important, know when to close your positions and make the most amount of profit 
possible. Many strategies revolve around these Greeks in one form or another, so understanding them will make your journey through this whole crazy world of options much easier. Now we're building up a whole portfolio of option videos here, so if you are new to this channel, you can go ahead and click my other videos, boom and boom. And if you learned something today, then go ahead, please hit the like button. That would mean a lot to me. I mean, you've watched this video for free, so it's the least you can do. Come on. So with that being said, guys, thanks so much for tuning in to Pandrea Finance, and we will see you very shortly on the next video.